My name is Ariana Carini, and I'm a student at Cardiff University who's here for the summer working with Team Hoard at Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery. And I'll be talking to you today about microscopes. So this is a silver piece with yellow decoration at 20 times magnification. And it's a very small piece to begin with, but it's nice that we can use microscopes to see what's going on. Because if you'll see here, there's also silver gilding that's all in this area. And so I was able to identify that before continuing with conservation. These are the bench microscopes that we use every single day with every single object. Uh, most of the hoard items are very small, so the fact that these go up to 45 times and have variable focus is fantastic. This is our larger bench microscope, which has a higher magnification and it goes up to 75 times. And it's great because it also has a camera attached, so we can take pictures of changes in the material and the objects as we're working. This image is magnified 7.5 times, and we can see quite a bit of the object in focus. Though if we jump to a high magnification, say 75 times, the depth of field, or area that can be focused, is in a very narrow range, making it very difficult to focus the entire image. Here I'm trying to take a clear photograph, and at the moment the top of the raised yellow decoration is focused, but just with a twist of the focus knob, now the bottom of the channel is in focus. This can be really frustrating for documentation of objects that seem relatively flat to the naked eye. So then we received a new microscope in the summer of 2011, and this microscope helps us take care of that focus issue because it can work in 3D. So in order to fix this focus problem, we're going to stack the photos with different levels of focus uh, so that eventually, I'll just hit the button, um, after taking an image at certain intervals, it'll stitch together these photos and everything will be in focus. Perfect. So we can see these images as a 2D file or a 3D manipulatable file, which we can spin around and look at different heights and take measurements for our reports and blogs. Uh, we can also share these images with researchers so that they can look at technology or certain types of corrosion to tell what is going on with an object. In addition to being able to move the stage left and right without moving any fragile objects, which is especially good because this the yellow tends to be fragile, we can also move the camera to see side images of, say, this, this strip, and so we can see the edge here in focus without having to move the object. So this microscope is also capable of taking video, which is just another layer of documentation that we can save for future generations who work with the horde. Um, in this case, the camera is just moving uh, side to side around the object, but it looks as if the object is moving, which is a very uh, true experience of what working with hoard items is like. You don't ever just keep it in a flat position. You always move them side to side, see what's going on in all angles. Okay, what you can see on the screen now is a hundred times magnification of just one of the yellow channels of this piece, but another great thing that this microscope does is you can start to stitch images together so I can have the detail of the 100 times magnification but I can get the whole piece. When we work with high levels of magnification we need a lot of light which when working with shiny metal is very difficult. So what the program can do is remove glare by just hitting a button except sometimes it makes the object look much different than it does in real life. So if we do remove the glare, then we're sure to note it in the file name or our notes. And those are the microscopes that are around the lab. Thanks for watching.